Hello everyone, happy Wednesday to you. I wanted to do an encouraging story from the book of 2 Kings chapter 5 um, that really talks about the Lord reaching into people's lives who are having nothing to do with him, literally in darkness, have absolutely nothing to do with them. Uh, pagans in this uh in this script in this section of scripture worshiping false gods and uses an affliction to reach out and bring salvation to him and so don't ever give up hope for people who you you know love or care for that are very far away because this section of scripture will definitely give you hope so i'm going to get right into it so um Starting in uh, 2 Kings chapter 5, verse 1, it says, The king of Aram had great admiration for Naaman, the commander of his army, because through him the Lord had given Aram great victories. But though Naaman was a mighty warrior, he suffered from leprosy. So stopping here. The king of Aram is, you know, a Syrian, okay, and they are against Israel, actually. They are invaders. They're against Israel. They're pagans. They worship false gods. Naaman is a great warrior um, of this army and a commander, and he has leprosy, which is really a negative thing back in that time period. There's different arguments between biblical scholars about how bad certain leprosy was or, you know, or certain things with leprosy. Um, but regardless, he is afflicted with a skin disease and it says leprosy and he is an unbeliever, has nothing to do with God and even his, um, the king is also pagan. So then it says, at this time, Aramean raiders, which they're part of, had invaded the land of Israel. And among their captives was a young girl who had been given to Naaman's wife as a maid. One day, the girl said to her mistress, I wish my master would go to see the prophet in Samaria. He would heal him of his leprosy. So here... God ordains this situation. So this young girl was captured really as a slave and she is working in this household and the Lord uses her to reach the this unbeliever um, because of his disease. So Naaman told the king what the young girl from Israel had said. Go and visit the prophet. The king of Aram told him, I will send a letter of introduction for you to take to the king of Israel. And first of all, he's doing this because this specific Naaman had brought him great victory in battle. So he's helping him out by doing this. So it says, um, so Naaman started out carrying um, gifts of 750 pounds of silver, 150 pounds of gold and 10 sets of clothing. So that is a major gift. The letter to the king of Israel said, with this letter, I present my servant Naaman. I want you to heal him of his leprosy. So this letter was brought to the king of Israel. When the king of Israel read the letter, he tore his clothes in dismay and said, this man sends me a leper to heal? Am I God that I can give life and take it away? I can see that he's just trying to pick a fight with me. So basically, the king of Israel is acknowledging, well, I can't heal this guy. You know, I'm not God. Now, he's thinking there's a backstory on this that it's really just, uh, you know, them starting to, you know, uh, stir up problems and picking a fight or starting another war with him, okay? Which is really not the case, actually. But when Elisha, the man of God, heard the king of Israel had torn his clothes in dismay, he sent this mis message to him. Why are you so upset? Send Naaman to me and he will learn that there is a true prophet here in Israel because there was a lot of tons of false prophets who would tell you what you wanted to hear, 
you know, they would preach peace um, and safety and there would actually be destruction coming upon them. So Elisha was a true prophet who preached the true word of God given to him by the Lord Almighty. So then it says, so Naaman went with his horses and chariots and waited at the door to Elisha's house. But Elisha sent a messenger out to him with this message. Go and wash yourselves seven times in the Jordan River. Then your skin will be restored and you will be healed of your leprosy. But Naaman became very angry and stalked away. I thought he would certainly come out to meet me, he said, and I expected him to wave his hand over the leprosy and call on the name of the Lord, his God, and heal me. So stopping there for a moment. First of all, he's prideful. Naaman is. He's an unbeliever, a pagan, whilst worshiping false gods who obviously hadn't healed him, okay? He's mad that a messenger was sent out instead of the true prophet, and he told him to do something simple. So he is offended, and, you know, he's a prideful in the matter. And then he goes on to say, aren't the rivers of Damascus and the Abana and the Pofar Par better than the rivers of Israel? Why shouldn't I wash in them and be healed? And so Naaman turned away and went away in a rage. So haughtiness, you know, pridefulness, you know, saying, oh, well, this river, why should I wash in this river when we have far better rivers? Okay. But his officers tried to reason with him and said, sir, if the prophet had told you to do something very difficult, wouldn't you have done it? So you should certainly obey him when he says simply, go and wash and be cured. So Naaman went down to the Jordan River and dipped himself seven times as the man of God had instructed him. And his skin became as healthy as the skin of a young child and he was healed. So finally, he humbled himself. He listened to his common sense officers and he did it and he was healed proving that the lord god almighty is real um and also that that was a true prophet in israel that here is where also the other miracle that's more important happens than the physical healing then naaman and his entire party went back to find the man of god they stood before him and Naaman said, Now I know that there is no God in all of the world except in Israel. So please accept a gift from your servant. Total change of attitude. First of all, recognizing there's only one God, the God of Israel, the Lord God Almighty through the Lord Jesus Christ. And also humbling himself now saying he is his servant instead of being haughty as before. But Elisha replied, as surely as the Lord lives whom I serve, I will not accept any gifts. And though Naaman urged him to take the gift, Elisha refused. So he is being you know, honest and saying, absolutely not. This it was from God Almighty. I'm not taking gifts over him, this, you know, and even though Naaman kept urging him to take the gifts. Then Naaman said, all right, but please allow me to load two of my mules with earth from this place. From now on, I will never again offer burnt offerings or sacrifices to any other god except the lord so he is giving pure allegiance to the lord almighty the god of israel okay which shows that he is a true believer and he has faith in him so he had gained salvation through that faith in the lord almighty However, then he asked one more thing. However, may the Lord pardon me in this one thing. When my master, the king, goes into the temple of the god Rimon to worship there and leans on my arm, may the Lord pardon me when I bow too. Go in peace, Elisha said. So Naaman started home again. So what he was saying is that 
his uh, king was going to be bowing at this god Rimen, and he asks for pardoning when he bows and he's holding him with his arm, saying, I'm really not worshiping that false god Rimen. I Please excuse me. This is just something that I have to do, being his commander. And so Elisha's saying, yes, go in peace and understanding it. So what the miracle was, even though there was a physical miracle, the Lord reached out to somebody in complete darkness who had no mind of wanting salvation. He just wanted to be healed. He used this little, this slave girl to be the messenger of the gospel and used her position of being captured to bring light and the gospel into this man's life broke through his pride, humbled him, proved to him that the Lord Almighty is God alone, and most importantly, bought, brought salvation into his life, and he became a true believer. So don't ever think that someone is too far away. They're too much in darkness. I have heard story after story of people being in cults, being Satanists, being atheist and coming to Christ with something like this because the Lord reached out to them. They didn't seek him. The Lord in his kindness and mercy reached out to those unbelievers. So take hope in this Old Testament story and that we have a God of mercy. I will see you on Thursday. God bless.